Hey guys, welcome to the new improved channel. I got an intro, I got a, a green screen, I got my mic, I got some lights, they're super cheap. This whole thing is like got an increase of production value of like $40. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is like a bunch of taped together uh, like poster boards for Walmart just like super green see look at that that's that's an effect oh yeah Ooh. But anyway today we're gonna actually do a deck profile I'm not just gonna come on here and dick around as much as I would like to cuz just cuz I want to put crap back here today it's gonna be our UA deck profile though my build not Ryan's build I know I've been kind of doing some like crazy alternate reality builds of the damn thing but with the new support uh, we just don't have room for that kind of fun stuff anymore so this is my pure UAs which I haven't really done much of myself I'm really enjoying the deck I went 4-0 and 3-1 in two tournaments uh, with this build uh, really good I since then have changed like two techs or something but it's it's really mostly the same thing so I feel confident enough to kind of give you a tournament report before I do anything. But yeah, we're going to get into the deck profile, then I'm going to do some duels with it. And it's going to be a great time, and you guys are going to enjoy the crisp, new, clean look of my super, super nerdy crap that I'm doing with this thing. Um, but yeah, guys, let's get to the deck. Alright guys, uh, this is going to be really, really quick. Basically... It's pretty straightforward. We got one dunker for all the OTKs. We have one blockbacker to deal with special summons. We have two rival rebounders. He's a new guy. Uh, one goalkeeper because I just can't for the life of me figure out how to get rid of him. He's really, really, really handy in certain matchups. Uh, he saved my life more than once. Uh, problem is he doesn't really do very much. So he's kind of like, it's like, you gotta have him. Uh, two sluggers, this kind of, I always finagle this one between one and two. You really only need one, problem is, it's really nice to draw into it and not have to search it, because then you can search your defensive guys instead. Same reason why I'm playing two ace, I'd rather not have to search one or the other. Uh, it makes it so much easier and you play so much better when you have at least one UA level five in your hand. Plus I'm running two Monarch Stormforth, so I need at least one, two, three, four... Uh, five, six, seven targets. I really want to make sure that uh, this thing is never dead. And next up, uh, Assault Halberd. Uh, I like this Heroic Champion, um, or Her Heroic Challenger, sorry. Basically, it's a, it's a Cyber Dragon, and if he does battle damage, in which he does pierce, uh, you can search the other one. It's really, really nice. It opens up rank fours, and sometimes it's uh, just good for tribute. It gets you out of uh, a dead hand if you have a bunch of these, like, one guys. One tribute guys. And then we got the three midfielder. Basically, we need these things. We'd use another level four UA if we had one. Regeki, pretty self-explanatory. Three Rota, because we're playing Warriors. Three Signing Deal. I love this card. This card's great. You got Tommy Wiseau up there, uh, hanging out with Johnny Cage, I guess. <laughs> You're signing me on, Lisa! Basically, this card is uh, e-teleport for any UA. You, they lose their effect, and you just pay a bunch of life points, but who really cares? You're just going to flop them around anyway. Uh, Upstart Goblin for consistency. Uh, terraforming, you need three. It's annoying not to run three, and it's annoying to run three. What an obnoxious card, but you really do need it because you need the field spell. Uh, quick note, this might turn into Chicken Race when that card comes out because of this has a target and basically you can just use Chicken Race, get your draw, slap this thing over it uh, later in the duel when you don't really need Stadium anymore because you've got all your UAs floating between your hand and the field, you can start using Chicken Race again, start getting it tech, you know, I, I think that might be a very, very interesting card along with Instant Fusion and Noden to start getting like your midfielders out of the grave if you're doing some rank fours and stuff. There's some cards coming down the line, even if we don't get any more support that we can we can kind of use. But that's just my musings for now. But you know, for now, it, it, it's upstart and in terror for me. Then we got the two monarchs. Uh, some people use star blast. I like monarchs. This gets you out of gin lock and other. Uh, it gets rid of a lot of other problem monsters. I really like the card. It's kind of fun. One jersey. I'd love this to be at three, but I don't have the room because jersey wins games by itself. It's a great card. Uh, UA Stadium. You need this thing for the deck to work. That's all it does. 
Here's a new one, uh, Mine Crush. I own one, so I'm going to try running it. It's actually really come in handy a couple of times. I've used this against, like, you send you and just called comma three after watching them bounce three back to their hand. <laughs> like, this thing really does win games. It loses games if used against this deck, because this deck searches so much. Uh, Maxi, Shared Ride, and Mine Crush wreck this deck. So... Uh, I figured, you know what, I'm going to put one of them in because I have one and I needed, I had an extra tech space. Uh, the other one would be Vanity's Emptiness. I probably would go to Mind Crush at 2 and take Vanity's out if I own one. If I ever find another one of these, I'll probably take this out. Although this has come in quite handy. And with all these spells, I can turn it off pretty easily. And with the Royal Decree, I can turn it off as well. And Royal Decree, I got one on the side. This thing is really, really nice. Uh, basically... It turns your Dunker into a Slugger, you don't have to worry about Battle Traps, and then Dunker can start popping stuff, so you can really gain advantage very quick with Royal Decree. Start popping their back row, popping their monsters, you know, get rid of their traps before they turn Royal Decree off with their MSTs. It's really nice. Last but not least is UA Penalty Box. You need three, it's kind of cloggy at three, but it's almost kind of the point. You need one in your hand for Ace Food, you need one on the field for... Uh, a battle trap, you need one in the deck so that your Lavalval chain has something to pitch. That's the best way to describe it. And then your uh, <laughs> your extra deck can be whatever the hell you want. You'll never make any of it except Lavalval chain <laughs> to ditch this. That's really all. And maybe you'll make Cowboy for game. Then the side deck, uh, two Lancia for, for Ritual Beasts and uh, Necros, three Flying Sea for S Knights and Burning Abyss. Three shared ride for necros, two for Klee, uh, MSTs for Klee's. The turnover tactics is in the side. I can never figure out how to get this in the main deck. It's really good, and I would love to main it, um, but I find myself taking it out all the time for a better card. So I figured if I, I'll side it in against things like Infernoids or something that just can't deal with the card very well. Uh, Royal Decree, I have another one in the side just in case I'm playing like Volcanics or Usenjus or. Ritual Beast, or some very heavy back row deck, and I just need more uh, Royal Decrees. And then three Lightning Prisoning Mirror, because uh, the Star Seraphs and S Knights are quite difficult. A rank four spam deck can still deal with this deck very well. Alright, that was the deck. It's really bad. Don't build it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. Let's duel. Alright, Ritual Beasts. Oh, uh, this is a little fun duel. It didn't take too long. I got a little lucky here with this uh, upstart, get an ace, which lets me open ace and block backer, which was pretty good. I also have a penalty box in hand and field, which means I have ace food and MST bait. So uh, I'm in a pretty good situation. He MSTs it, which was pretty lousy on his part. And he makes ulti Apelio here. I negate its effects. Um... Which leads to something a little strange. I basically use the penalty box to get Jersey, and then I just get Dunker. I'm thinking I'm going to do game here. He breaks it apart like you would for cost, but its effects are still negated in the extra deck, which is really strange. I'm not sure if that's correct. Um, it might be, though, because he says uh, negate their effects. He doesn't say, like, well, it's face up in the field or anything. So I negate the uh, e teleport, and he loses. He just quits. Alright, this one against Magicians. Um, I haven't really played this deck before. Uh, it's like a Magician Odd Eyes deck. I, I don't know what's going on. So I'm just like, whatever. Uh, Ace? And Slugger, maybe? Nothing was ideal, but I was like, whatever. I don't, wanna, I don't know what I'm playing against. And then after he started playing cards, I still didn't know what I was playing against. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? So he plays Polymerization. I wanted to negate this thing's effect, but apparently it can negate my negate. So that was a big misplay. I should have negated uh, Polymerization, but <laughs> my misplay gets made up by the fact that I totally sack him with Monarch Stormforth later. But uh, I get the Jersey, which I sack him with, <laughs> so I can still get over this thing, do a bunch of damage. On his move, he plays the trap. And gets this other dragon on board, kills my midfielder. I'm like crap. So then I sack him for a second turn with this monarch store forth. <laughs> and then I, I uh, hit him with a slugger. And basically at this point he's got to draw into something and he doesn't draw into anything that he needed. So he's like, well maybe Dave can't kill me. I think he forgot I had the power jersey and I just killed him. Yeah, that was kind of lucky.
especially after that big misplay. But if I didn't, uh, if I negated that polymerization, I would have had this duel. I just didn't know what the hell I was playing against. And I got lucky, so it made up for it. Alright, and this is the last one. Uh, this is a really weird build. It's, uh, it looks like it's Cliff Forts, but it's not quite. So I don't know what I'm playing, so I put the uh, the Mind Crush in an ace, and he plays Disc. I'm like, oh great, Cliff Forts, I'm going to lose this. Because Cliff Forts are probably the worst matchup for you, Ace. Um, and then he plays the, you know, lose a turn. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is bad. I'm like, alright, but lose a turn is not the end of the world. Our defensive guys still work, but I can't go on the offensive. Luckily, my guys are too big. So I decided to do nothing, see what he does. And here's where it starts getting weird. He plays, like, Dry Wind and Aroma Garden. I'm like, what is he doing? So we go on this long chain. I don't want him to pop my back row. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So he attacks me for some damage. I'm like, alright, this kind of stinks. Get that upstart. Makes the Dry Wind go off, but there's nothing to pop. Get that stadium. Get that search. Just start playing some defense. That's all I can do, pretty much. Cephalopod. Goes to pop something. Negate the pop. I'm getting sick of that card. Plays Regeki. Figured I would save Goalkeeper because he's got the bigger defense. Although I should have probably saved uh, Ace. I don't. I guess he chose not to attack because he didn't know what my back row was. So he goes to Pendulum Summon. I choose not to block back because I don't want him in attack mode. And I use the penalty box, which ends up actually winning me this game. Because I'm like, alright, so I just got to keep the pressure on and and keep banishing stuff whenever I can. To make sure that his extra deck remains as small as possible. Still dealing with lose a turn. I figured I'd put Dunker on board, see if I can't, you know, keep him on it for a turn. And he can't, I don't negate it, so it doesn't change his battle position. So I just keep playing cards, keep playing cards. And, uh, pop. Get that pop. And that pretty much, that gave me the game. At this point, he can't do anything, and I think he top stacks into another Aroma Garden, and it's mine. Yep. <laughs> what a strange deck, though. Uh, Cleefort Arrow Mage. Very, very weird. Woo! Those are some fun duels. I love using this deck. It's a riot. Um... I can't wait to take this to a couple more tournaments, uh, and when I do that, I'll probably give you guys an update, let you guys know. I got a couple more decks coming down. Uh, we've got some cards we got to talk about. Uh, I've kind of taken a little hiatus on the whole video thing because I've been trying to get all this set up uh, and get the intro made. That was actually a lot of work. As cheesy as that thing is, that was a lot of work. Like, damn, I have an appreciation for for this whole process more than I have ever done. But yeah, remember guys, like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you guys have any ideas what you want me to float back here, you know, <laughs> what cheesy crap, as long as it's not clickbait, I'm not putting boobs back there. Yeah, I'm not putting boobs back there. But yeah, um, whatever you guys want to do, just let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and remember, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time.